Mart McDonald. I'm the Gordon and Patricia Gray Chair in Particle Astrophysics Emeritus at Queen's University, former director of the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory experiment, for which I received the Nobel Prize for the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory experiment, a collaboration with 250 of my collaborators. I'm from Nova Scotia, from Sydney, and uh, uh, I and I grew up there and my full education there. Uh, went to school at Sydney Academy and uh, was strongly influenced by a math professor there, Bob Chafe, uh, who got me interested in mathematics. And when I went to university at Dalhousie, uh, I was uh, inspired to try to use math in science. And I found that physics was both what I enjoyed and what I seemed to be good at which I think is a good way for young people to choose a career. Figure out what you'd find enjoyable when you get up in the morning to go to work each day. Try a few of them, see what you're good at. Pick the best and you can be successful. That's certainly the story of my uh, career. And the research I've been doing, which is in a field called particle astrophysics, uh, is a study of things where particle physics and astrophysics come together. Studies of the fundamental laws of physics at the very basic level, the individual constituents that make up matter and, and the interactions that occur to create the world around us, but also how those things influence how the universe has evolved from its very early days. It turns out that you can learn things in those two areas, particle physics and astrophysics, that play off each other. It has to work overall between the two of them. And a discovery in one area can help you in understanding the other area. I won the Nobel Prize as the director of a large scientific collaboration, the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory collaboration. The group measured the fact that neutrinos produced in very large numbers in the core of the sun by the nuclear reactors, reactions that power the sun of a type called electron neutrinos change before reaching the Earth into the other two types, muon and tau neutrinos, two thirds of the time. That's something that was outside of the predictions of the standard model of elementary particles, the most basic model at the time. And it implies that these neutrinos have a rest mass which is greater than zero. They don't behave like the photons of light with zero mass. They have a rest mass as other particles do, albeit very light. That was a revolutionary discovery. And we shared the prize with a group from Japan that observed similar types of properties for neutrinos that are produced in the atmosphere by incoming cosmic rays. I didn't expect to win a Nobel Prize. That's, that's something that's beyond anyone's expectations, especially when I, when I met some Nobel Prize winners. I was taught by uh, uh, Richard Feynman and Rudolf Mossbauer when I was at Caltech. Um, on the other hand, I did find that I really enjoyed doing science. And so I hoped when I embarked on this career that I would be able to have a productive career, would be able to make contributions in science, and, uh, and that was merely my main motivation throughout. And uh, that, that's, that's the main thing. You don't start out your career thinking, I'll only be successful if I win a Nobel Prize, by no means. In fact, our collaboration, I think, uh, we're satisfied most by having made a discovery in physics that makes a change in how we perceive the world around us. Uh, the Nobel Prize is very nice in that it gives you a, uh, uh, let's say, a group of people who have certified what, what you've done has been of significance. But the real defining moment associated with our work was when we made the scientific discovery and not the award of the Nobel Prize. The phone call from Stockholm came about 10 after 5 in the morning here in Kingston. Uh, my wife grabbed one extension first, and I uh, uh, was about to say, 
What do you mean calling us at this time of the morning? She actually, uh, this is after she determined that it wasn't somebody telling us there was a problem in the family. And I managed to recognize a Swedish accent before she could say anything and, and uh, uh, then had a wonderful discussion with members of the committee uh, who informed us, informed me that we had, that I had won the Nobel Prize and uh, then went on to, uh, uh, to allow the other members of the committee to, uh, to congratulate me and so on. The final member of the committee is a fellow uh, who I had known previously, who was a big hockey fan as I was, and I am. And uh, he uh, reminded me that when we had spoken a uh, uh, couple of years before, we were discussing uh, the NHL and particularly Matt Sundin, who was the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs, a team that I've followed since the 1950s. Um, and uh, uh, so I, I told him that I wish that Matt still played for the Leafs because they weren't doing very well at the time. I asked him later, why had he mentioned this to me? And he said in part to make sure that I, I knew that it was reality, it wasn't a hoax. Uh, and in part just bring me down to earth a little bit after a rather uh, shocking uh, discovery. And so the title of the article in the Kingston Whig Standard the next morning uh, the next day was uh, not Kingston Man wins a Nobel Prize. It was not a hoax. <laughs> so, and it was another commentary uh, on, on, a, on a blog, I believe, that uh, said a typical Canadian learns he wins a Nobel Prize and all he wants to talk about is hockey. <laughs> Nobel Week in Stockholm is a tremendous experience. The uh, whole city really goes out of its way to uh, play host to the winners and the people with them. But it was great. We had a, we had a party <laughs> in Stockholm. They, uh, you know, you meet the king and queen. I sat at the banquet between the two princesses. Uh, the, uh, my wife sat, sat between their husbands. Wonderful people. Everything is done at a very, very high level of uh, decorum and, and, uh, and, uh, pleasantness in terms of uh, the interactions between people. Everyone who went had a wonderful time. And uh, so St Sweden really knows how to throw a party, no question about it. Well, winning a Nobel Prize does change your life. Um, I had 1,500 emails in the first day, um, television interviews, uh, immediate uh, requests to come and speak around the world. Uh, I made certain that in the first year I went to the majority of the 13 institutions in Canada, the UK and the United States there where we had uh, had collaborators on the project uh, in order to make sure that the institutions felt inclusive, included in this and that uh, uh, everyone's contribution was well recognized. I've been trying to represent Canada well in the international scientific community. Uh, I've been trying to represent science well in the overall makeup of how we uh, carry out our lives in our various countries, particularly Canada. I've served on several uh, committees. And so it's a, it's a big responsibility. Uh, and uh, I've been trying to uh, uh, carry it out well. I've had advice from previous Nobel winners in Canada, like, uh, or from Canada, like Dick Taylor, who uh, originally from Medicine Hat and won the Nobel Prize as a Stanford uh, professor. And uh, he said, everybody will think that you're an immediate expert on everything. You're not. <laughs> and I've tried to take that to heart. I don't attempt to uh, deal with anything that I haven't uh, experienced in. But nevertheless, I think there are areas where I do have experience and perhaps many years of experience can be judiciously brought to uh, situations where the government or others uh, want a perspective. And uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a daunting experience to represent your field well. 
but it's very enjoyable as well. We've had wonderful hosts around the world. Before before COVID, I was on the on the road almost 50% of the time. Um, at the beginning, tremendous media coverage, and uh, uh, now uh, still many many requests to do presentations around the world. Well, I think perhaps what's interesting about my story is that I, um, I come from a small city in a small province. Uh, I, uh, there wasn't anything particularly exceptional about my uh, uh, upbringing. Uh, I was had a very good upbringing with lots of encouragement for education, but a lot of people have that. Um, I ended up finding a wonderful group of collaborators throughout my career very important for everyone, no matter what you're doing. Getting along with other people, being able to uh, accomplish more with uh, collaboration than you could individually uh, is very important throughout anybody's career. But because I was nothing exceptional <laughs> in starting out, anyone can do well if they are inspired, if they work hard, and if they have really good collaborators.